Yeah, so I'm uh, Samir Verma, I'm a professor of information systems here at San Francisco State in the College of Business. And I also uh, organize the local community here, the OLPC San Francisco volunteer community that um, organizes this event. So uh, we have a whole bunch of people here working on different projects. Uh, I think we have something like 12 to 14 different projects uh, in different parts, Madagascar, India, Jamaica, and so on. So uh, um, day job is to teach and conduct research in information systems and then you know, do this stuff at night, I guess, <laughs> or uh, whenever I can get the time. But I've been trying to combine my uh, professional interests with uh, some of the work that's happening in the field with OPC. Cool. So, what's uh, how have you seen the progression over the five years of the different summits? Hmm. Um, yeah. So you know, the group started back in the end of 2007, 2008, January is when we actually had the first meeting, and then by the time we got to 2009, there was a there was a sense that there is enough you know, in the local chapter where we can maybe spend half a day and uh, have a series of presentations and sessions. So 2009 was kind of small, but it, and it was still local. We only had people from the Bay Area here. Um, but it was fun because, you know, what happens is uh, every project varies, and so the scale and scope of it will be different. Uh, the challenges in terms of the location, language, culture, they're all different. So it was great to hear from all these different people uh, what they wanted to do, how it was working, uh, what the challenges were. And so 2009 was good, and then we said, okay, we'll do it again in 2010, and then it grew, because uh, I think there was a need to have a space for people to come in and work on these things. So 2010 just ballooned uh, rapidly, and it became sort of the de facto event for us then, annually. So we've done 2010, then we did 11, and then 12, and now 13. Um, so it's kind of you know, hard to believe this is the fifth one. The progression has been interesting in that it started off with something very local and focused and um, um, small, I would say, in terms of scale. Uh, for instance, I had no idea about a lot of the other projects in you know, Australia and so on. And then as it grew, we saw uh, one year lots of information, but uh, very hard to focus on. And the following year, you start to see the focus increase. And eventually, then it's like the size of the group and the sessions start to uh, sort of compress. You see more people in a specific room. So this year, what I'm seeing is, um, you know, the momentum is there, but we are starting to see uh, a sort of a metamorphosis. So, you know, for instance, a lot of people still look at this and they go, oh, that's the, the XO machine, you know, for, um, uh, the third world countries and stuff like that, but they don't realize that it still looks the same, but it's actually the fourth generation. And this thing actually is, you know, touch-based and you can do that just like a tablet. Um, but then on the other hand, you see in the market that uh, you see Android tablets everywhere, right? And the price of hardware has gone down. So in some ways that original objective of uh, can we get computing into the hands of kids everywhere is, is more achievable because for 50 bucks you can get a tablet. But then we have all this software and we have all the thinking in terms of constructivist learning and constructionism and so on embedded in this machine, right? Um, and then can we take it out of here and put it on to say a Nexus 7, right, for 200 bucks and take that out into the field? There will be some challenges, you know. You will not be able to get a sunlight readable screen. Uh, you will not, you know, get this collaboration through the Wi-Fi. Uh, there's, an, there's an application here called Measure that uses the audio port to do a whole bunch of science experiments. That's kind of hard to do on those devices. But I think there is a movement in that direction where sugar is going to live outside this box onto other platforms. And that's a good thing because then, you know, that ideology actually starts to move into all these other platforms, you know, whether it's a phone or a tablet, a desktop, this. Um, it doesn't matter at that point. And I'm kind of seeing that uh, it's, it's difficult because this community has been very focused on the project and this is the device we know. And so everything we've done is around this. And when it's time to sort of grow up and leave your home, uh, you know, there's that challenge. And I think that's what's happening now is, okay, it's time for the software and the philosophy behind it to grow outside of this box. 
and migrate to other platforms and so on. So it's a good thing and I think we're moving in that direction uh, from what I've been able to gather on the email lists and discussions here. Um, there will be growing pains, but we'll move in that direction. The other thing that I've noticed is uh, a lot more people are starting to take their work, whether it's server-based or like a book server or any of those things, and they're starting to expand beyond just the old PC XO. So for instance, if you go to a project and you had old PC XOs, but now you want to bring in Android tablets, can we support both? Can we build so that it works for all devices? And I think that's another indicator that we are moving in that direction uh, to accommodate other platforms and other you know, uh, groups of people and not just focus on this particular platform. So I think that's kind of where the community is. Um, personally for me, you know, my heart is still in here. Um, you know, this may look like it's five, seven years old, but um, the projects that I run, uh, it's hard to beat this thing. I mean, I, I would not use a garden variety Android tablet in any of my projects if I had the choice because, you know, if you think about the, the, you know, the dust and the dirt and the humidity and kids and, you know, drop this on the floor, fix the screen in the field, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to beat those things. But then uh, market forces change and you have to sort of uh, modify your plans according to that. So I think we, we're going to go through that for the next six months to a year. And hopefully we come out the other end much bigger and much better. Cool. And then go ahead and give a quick update on your projects in Jamaica and India. Um, okay, so, so Jamaica, we have now we have four pilot uh, schools. We started off with one and then it has grown to four. And we are now working with the Ministry of Education there to kind of look at the prospects of expanding to a whole bunch of other schools. Um, but along the way, uh, so that's Jamaica, and then there is a project I have in India with, uh, it's 26 laptops in a village. This is my family's village. And we've been able to use this model of distributing one laptop per household. We pick the youngest school-going kid, give them the laptop. So interestingly, we are not going through the school. There is no... Uh, channel through the school. This is a discovery-based learning thing with a server and internet connectivity. And they're, they're basically on their own. They're close to zero training at this point. Um, but they seem to learn from each other, and they're doing well. It's a small community, um, and they're starting to discover new things. Um, a few weeks ago, we turned on the internet, so they got on. They started to figure out Google. Then they figured out Facebook. Um, and so now I wake up in the morning and, you know, the kid who lives next door to us in the village sends me a little message about something. And that's, that's mind-blowing. It's like, wow, you can actually, you know, see the results of this. So that's sort of growing, growing well, but it's in a, in a very small space. What I've been able to do, though, is take lessons from Jamaica and India and cross-pollinate. So whatever we see in Jamaica, I try to do that in India and then vice versa. And that has given rise to... Um, uh, a fair bit of interest in a space called learning analytics. So at the University of West Indies, which is where we run the Jamaica projects, what we do is we gather data on the usage of these laptops. So we're able to look at, for instance, an aggregate in a classroom and figure out, you know, as a classroom, what's the most popular activity for these guys? And in Jamaica, it turns out to be it's tux math. They love tux math. Uh, now, we had anecdotal evidence about that from the parents and the teachers, but now we have numbers. So here's the evidence from interviews of parents, and here are the numbers, and they actually match. That's kind of the evidence we want, right, in terms of what's happening in the field. The other thing that's happening is we're starting to grow out of that, uh, you know, data collection, gathering, measurement kind of uh, stuff into a, an infrastructure where as we bring more schools online, we'd like to be able to aggregate those. So you have, you know, the teacher can look at a dashboard and say, okay, this is what my class is doing. Um, one question that comes up is, is it important for the laptop to go home, right? Uh, and, you know, philosophically, you can argue different ways about it. Uh, operationally, you can argue about it because it's an expensive thing, so we'll lock it up in the closet and that kind of stuff. But by doing this analytic stuff, we now have data that says when the laptops go home in Jamaica, 65% of the usage is outside of school. 
35% is within the school. So already there is a, you know, uh, two thirds to one thirds. Then we also see a significant difference in the kinds of things they do in school versus what they do at home. At home it's more about recording video, about music or singing or, you know, doing fun stuff, taking pictures and all that. In school it's more about looking at Wikipedia and looking at a book and those things. This is evidence. This is what we need to be able to go and say, look, this works, but it works in school and at home, and it needs to go home, otherwise that discovery-based learning doesn't stick. In the India project, because we, the laptops don't go to school, it's almost exclusively discovery-based. And there we see a different pattern, but again, we collect data and we see what's popular, what do the kids do. So until we turned on the internet, there was no internet. They did not know anything about the web. So they're focused on certain activities. Then we turn on the internet and we see a shift. So as the data comes in now, we will probably see a significant shift moving in that direction where they'll probably spend more time online, looking at stuff online, right? And it's not so much of a prescriptive thing, like this is how it should be. Um, I mean, my, my view as a researcher is very hands-off in a sense. My view doesn't count, right? This is very descriptive. We just want to look and see what happens and then inform the educators or the Ministry of Education or whoever that, look, this is kind of what we're seeing, right? So that has been very useful and uh, at this event, we presented that work. Uh, one of the guys is here from Jamaica and it turns out to be there's a lot of interest in this. So we're gonna be collaborating with OPC Canada and a few other projects to see if we can grow this, this analytics thing um, to a point where it's useful for the teacher, useful for the parents, uh, useful for the principal, uh, and then the ministry. <laughs> and amusingly, when you look at what is it that they want, they all want different things. The parents want to know, what do my kids spend time on? The teacher wants to know, are they doing their curricular stuff? The principal wants to know, you know, the, the performance of the entire school. The ministry wants to know, you know, what districts are doing well and, you know, where do we put the resources to help the teachers and so on. So it's a complex project, for sure, but I think we've got a good uh, running start with the research we've done, and now it'll start to build. So I think in a, another six months to a year, we should have something quite significant in that space. Cool, cool. Yep. Thanks. All right, thank you.